Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. In this episode, I will be reviewing the K-Bar Mule. Well, there's what you get with the K-Bar Mule. You get a case. Now, this is the 10 version. Um, the one that I'm giving away in my contest here, which the link will be provided below, is the black version. That's what the packaging looks like. And let's take a look at the sheath here. Um, you can go ahead and put this on your belt, both horizontal or vertical. And it's uh, made okay. I wouldn't say this is the best sheath in the world, but it's, uh, it's built okay. I would have liked to have seen double stitching. And this is just single stitching. This nylon here is pretty good. Ballistic nylon here, it's a little bit... It almost feels like a cotton. It might be nylon, but um, some of it is made well, some of it is not. So anyway, here's another issue. Well, first, there is a button. I mean, I like a snap, but with a tactical knife, one thing I don't want on my tactical knife, personally, this personal opinion is Velcro. I mean, it's supposed to be stealthy. It's supposed to be sneaking up on you. So I'm going to be sneaking on my people, and then I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to be really quiet, and I'm going to pull out my knife. <laughs> Get rid of the Velcro on, on um, tactical folders, please. So let's take a really close look at the knife. You have a Zytel handle with these rubber inserts. There may be another name for it, but they're sort of um, a little harder than rubber, but they add to the grip. You also get a generous lanyard hole, and if you notice that the clip can be mounted on either side, however, it's always tip up. So tip up only, left or right handed carry. The locking mechanism is a lock back, and there are dual thumb studs, so this knife is completely ambidextrous. Now one issue is that, although I like this type of clip that comes down like this, it is very tight and that clip bears down on one of these rubber inserts as you can see so it could be a little tough to get out of your pocket now it is deep concealment you can see how that clip comes all the way close to the top let's take a look at the inside what you have here is a clip point blade that's teflon coated it is made of os 8a steel so very good steel for the money by the way this runs about fifty dollars give or take ten there is some jimping on the ramp right here on the top and holding it it is extremely comfortable this is a very comfortable knife um, i do have large hands on so that can't speak for someone that has small hands very comfortable it's comfortable in the reverse grip and it's comfortable in your normal grip and for your fine cutting grip. I like how this, see how the handle on both sides here sort of comes in right here. That makes it comfortable when you're holding it like this when you're opening boxes or doing some fine work. Now this particular model is the um, partially serrated blade and its serrations done right. They're not coming to a point where they would snag what you're trying to cut. And that edge doesn't quite come that shiny. I um, This is the one I've had for half a year. So this um, got sharpened on my paper wheel. On my grinder. So um, it's really sharp. It's hair splitting sharp. Um, one other thing that's very remarkable about this knife is its weight. It's sheer weight. It's half a pound of solid K-bar um, machinery. Um, a lot of that weight is the handle, not really the blade. If you notice, the the center of gravity is is way back here. I would say um, almost right here is the center of gravity, and the reason why is it has these steel liners that are solid. There, there's no hollowing of the steel liners. They are solid, and the Zytel handle um, all add to a very very heavy but but very solid handle and a very solid knife um, the HRC 
for the steel, the OS 8A steel is anywhere between 57 and 59. And unfortunately, although this is an American company, they do make a lot of things in the USA. I'm not going to say unfortunately, but it is made in Taiwan, not the U.S. So if you do, um, you know, want a U.S. made K-Bar, this is not it. And I don't think any of the K-Bar mules are made in the United States. So that's what you get. Um, retail price is about $65. You could probably find it in stores for as low as $45. So by the way, the um, blade is a hollow ground blade. And it comes up to about halfway. And it is a clip point. This is Teflon coated. This Teflon coating will come off with normal to heavy use so if you want to keep one looking nice you're gonna to have to get a second one there have been reports and there is a video of the lock failing on this knife um, I kinda of find it hard to believe that a lock with a lock back like this would fail um, it, it locks up very solid there's no side to side or up and down play but um, you know lock backs are inherently uh, very good at what they do. Now this does have a pivot screw that you can adjust. It is a Torx screw. There's other Torx screws here that hold the scales together. And let's take a look at blade centering. Go ahead and close this up. And I should have a flashlight here. I just did the flashlight review. Um, we could take a look at the centering real quick. And it's spot on spot on centering. Now while I have the flashlight here let's take a close look at some other things. Look at those thumb studs. Some serious gnarly um, thumb studs there. You get a good close look at the jumping there. Let's take a look at the inside of the knife. Like I said it was solid steel in there. It's kinda hard to see. but it's pretty solid now because it's a lock back the back is uh, pretty closed up so it's not a open pillar design and even the the back here has a whole bunch of steel so if you had to hit somebody with the back of this it, it'll do damage it could be used as a a blunt impact device for uh, some tactical defense pretty good and it's big enough so you could really you know I have my hand wrapped around this thing and I have enough back here to maybe hit a pressure point so this is a very good tactical folder now the size of the blade is up for a lot of debate because uh, they say four and three sixteenths on most websites I'm sorry three and three sixteenths we could take a look here and it all depends on where you measure it from. I'm trying to get this even as possible here. You can see some websites say four, but you know, I don't know if you want to count this here, which is really bogus. Could add some extra light here. Um, the usable blade comes to about three and three um, three eighths. Three and three eighths, or almost, almost three and a half the usable blade. If you're looking for a very well made, very heavy, <laughs> solidly built brick tank mule, which is why they call it the K-Bar mule, of a knife, of a tactical folder, this is it. And I do like that they give you the option where you could use a sheath or you can go ahead and, you know, put it in your pocket with the clip. And I like that it's a uh, um, tip-up carry. You do have to get used to closing this one-handed. You know, the lockbacks are a little bit trickier to close than the liner locks or the frame locks. But you can do it with practice, you know, you when you open it up. What I do is I just uh, flip it around in my hand, place my thumb on the um, lock here, and they just nudge the knife out of place a little bit and then turn it around. But you got to be careful because you could easily cut your figure off, especially if you have it razor sharp like I do. So, this is my review. I am going to give this a 9 out of 10. I love this knife. 
this this uh, this is my go-to big tactical folder and it's getting a 9 out of 10 and it's one of the reasons why I'm giving one away in my contest that you can check out the link below check it out um, the the contest came out a week ago and you still have a couple more weeks to get your videos in to be eligible so thank you very much for joining me here again at the gear obsession channel I appreciate viewers and friends and subscribers and those of you who served in the military and are retired and um, police, firemen, and civil servants. Thank you very much and have a great, great day.